Now only a true tennis lover will understand this. Oh, don't you just love that smell? Let's get started. Okay guys, so today's video is all about improving power on your forehand and we're going to help you actually improve your technique without having to change it too much. So we're not going to be focusing on you know, making you change your grip or adding more spin than you normally hit or changing a backswing. It's basically if you have some of the basic fundamentals down, whatever your style of play is, there's three things that we need to focus on so we can actually hit our forehand hard in matches. So if you've ever crushed a forehand you know that it feels amazing it feels awesome and of course we want to repeat it as much as possible besides it feeling great it, it's hard for the opponent to return if we can hit a hard shot to the corner well naturally that's going to be a hard shot for our opponent to deal with so what happens to us how come we're not hitting that ball hard and solid in a match like we can sometimes go out on the practice court and do well it's one big reason we get nervous and when we get nervous it starts to mess up our technique. There's three problems we usually run into when we start playing a match. There's three things we normally start doing wrong and sometimes not even being aware of it. So let's get into those problems right now and the cool thing is is this video is going to actually help you play better in matches because once you're aware of this you can start to work on it on the practice court and then use these techniques in your matches so you're improving your forehand technique without having to make any major changes to your stroke. So let's get into problem number one. Okay, so problem number one I see, and they, they all tend to revolve around the same thing. We're nervous and we get tight. And when we get tight, we're holding back on our stroke. So I see so many players out there holding their breath when they're playing a match. They're not swinging freely and breathing through a stroke. If you look at so many sports, whether it's boxing, whether it is uh, weightlifting, right? You're taught to exhale, exhale when you're doing the work. And certainly tennis, we know a lot of tennis players out there grunt. So what are they doing? They're releasing the tension into the ball. Well, so many players out there are holding their breath. So as they're going to hit, the breath is held, they're hitting the ball and they're super tight, their arm gets really tight. And so how are we going to combat this problem? I would like you to go to the practice court so you can actually start to work on this so when you go out and play a match you know how to do it. And so what I want you to do is actually hold your breath. I want you to hold your breath for a, a long time until it starts to feel like, oh, I can't hold it much longer and without getting, of course, in any kind of uh, medical trouble here. I want you to hold your breath and then when you get ready to hit, I want you to release all the breath you just held and feel how relaxed and free you feel. So I'm going to try it right now. I'm going to come to the camera and here we go. I'm going to hold my breath. And then I release that tension into the ball and I just crush the forehand there. Let's show from the back view. So here we go again guys, I'm going to hold that breath. So we can see right there I looked relaxed, the tension just came right through, the body that felt great, felt smooth and lots of easy power on that. Okay, let's go to the second problem I see people run into. Okay, so the second problem I see is people get super tight in their arms and they're not in a flexing competition, okay? We're not trying to show tickets to the gun show here. We're tight because we're nervous, okay? Most of the people watching this video, at this point, you know you play enough tennis to know that you don't want to be tight when you're hitting the ball. You want to be relaxed, you want to be loose. So it goes beyond just saying, well, be loose. You have to start to work on physical things you can do to get yourself relaxed in a match. So I learned this from the great Jeff Greenwald who's one of the best players over 50 years old in the world and uh, he was part of our tennis con too and I never forget when he told me this. I learned this years ago from him and it works like a charm in a match. So if you're feeling super tight in a match, don't go against that. You know, it, don't just say, well, just be loose, just relax. It, most likely that's not gonna work for you, okay? That's actually, I think, a bad tip. What I want you to do is next time you feel super tight in a match, guess what I want you to do? I want you to get tighter. Now you're thinking, Pete, why would I do that? Why would I get even tighter? Because I want you to do this in between points. Use those 30 seconds, those 25 seconds you have in between your point to actually get as tight as you can get. And so what I want 
want you to do is hold that racket. I want you to hold a death grip on that racket. So as you're walking around here and, and picking up balls and getting ready, you're holding in a flex position here. Okay, and then when you get ready to serve or hit your first return, then you're going to relax. Okay, so I've held it super tight. I'm gonna hold it super tight for 10 seconds, and then I'm gonna stroke. So here we go, I'm holding it super tight, super tight, super tight, and now I'm gonna relax, and all the tension leaves my arm, and now I'm able to hit that shot. And sometimes all you need is just a nice, healthy start and a point uh, to get things going really well. So if you're in the match, and you, you hold it super tight in between, and then you hit your first shot or so, and you relax, then you can tend to play the rest of the point loop. Okay, here's the third problem I see when people are in matches, and this might be the biggest one, is when we get nervous, we tend to fall away from the ball. Now this has taken a lot of power off your shot and also usually leads to a lot of unforced errors because we're not staying with the contact point that long when we're falling off of the shot and so that's usually bringing the ball way long and we're not even getting any kind of power so you tend to e either be hitting balls out or you're just hitting like little sitters for your opponent to attack. So it looks something like this. You're nervous and you tend to be falling backwards off your shots. So here's what I want you to do. This is a great tip and this is something that you should really work into your practices so it becomes a habit. So you think about this and it's gonna force you to come forward and that is concentrating on bringing that back leg around. So if you're stepping in, you're coming here and you're pushing through with that back leg. That's gonna make you go forward. Even if you're hitting an open stance, so I'm open, now I'm hitting on this leg here and then focus on even after you hit coming there. So open, push, or if you are stepping in, step in, push, and that's gonna keep you driving forward through the ball. So if you get that habit down and developed, it's gonna be on autopilot in a match. So let me show you a couple forehands with stepping around. Here we go, I'm here, I'm gonna get set, and I'm gonna step through, step around. Look at that aggressive footwork coming here. Step through, step around, one more. Step forward, step around. So there you go guys, if you follow those three steps, that should take you up a level or two in your match play. But if you want to really, really have your entire game go up a level, maybe two levels in the next 12 months, I have what I think is the coolest online learning program out there. It gets really, really, really interactive. It's more than just getting a user and password and I'm so proud of it that I've made an eight free part series, not a three part series, eight part free training series for you. So uh, watch this preview and if it looks good to you, sign up and I'll see you inside. Hey guys, Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. Today we've got a really cool lesson for you. We're gonna teach you the super spinner boomerang drop shot. Okay guys, I, I gotta be honest with you. Learning the super spinner boomerang drop shot is not gonna get your game to the next level in the next 12 months. And my job as your tennis coach is to help you consistently get better, see the progress, grow in your tennis game. So what we're gonna do today is a little different. We're gonna put down the racket, we're gonna put down the balls, we're gonna leave the tennis court, and we're gonna head on over to my house, and I'm gonna show you exactly step by step the pitfalls to avoid and what you really need to be doing over the next 12 months if you want to see your game go up to the next level. So come on, let's go.